What's interesting for us to notice is we don't use the word play because we're often working with people that are so serious and laser focused on creating results and hitting targets. And so when we come in, it's so interesting for me to realize that play actually is what we need to do first <laughs> before anything else, and yet we don't call it that. And that's where I think where the phrase stealth norming came from, because it's how we show up. Like, let's begin the way we want to go on. So it's as simple as how the chairs are designed in the room. Nobody's sitting behind tables. We're in a semicircle, or we call it a horseshoe shape. That's playful for some of our clients because they're used to being behind boardroom tables where they're protected and their uh, iPhone or Android or whatever is sitting under the table with them. All of a sudden, something shifts. So there's the design of the space. There's music playing, and we think about the demographics of who's going to be in the room, and what are the songs that, if they come up on the playlist, are going to have these people thinking back to when they were teenagers or young adults. So we think about that. We try and do a blend of music from different cultures. So in Canada, there's always going to be some French Quebecois artist. For us, that's playful. We want to do our preparation before anybody enters the room so that as they come in, they get an opportunity to move in the space and do something invited to sit down. There's journals out. There's usually big charts on the room with really playful visual images. We've got a little guy with a rocket suit and wings. So this idea of we're going to, we're going to begin with you relationally the way we want to go on. This is different. Something's going to happen here. We're sitting in a semicircle. There's no PowerPoint or technology. There's big charts on the room with quirky little characters. So for us, right from the beginning, we think about that. We know there needs to be a little bit of trust the driver credibility. Our clients care around our academic background, our experience, some of the sexy clients that we've had. We know that's important because it helps them step in. And they need very, very little of that before we invite them to stand up. Disencumber yourself of stuff. And I want to give you concrete stories and sort of try to paint it as vivid a picture of I can, as I can of what this looks like so I don't go all abstract and woo-woo. So that's what it would look like. Disencumber yourself of stuff. Before we begin, we're going to spend some time connecting deliberately. Line up alphabetically by middle name. If you don't have a middle name, you get a place of honor at the start of the line. If you have more than one middle name, pick your favorite one and use that. So right away, these people are relating with each other in different ways. They have no clue what each other's middle names are. And all of a sudden, they're in a lineup and they're learning something about each other. Okay, partner up. Quick pair share, one minute story each. Tell a story about your name. Could be a story about your first name. How did your mom and dad choose it? Could be a story about your surname. What's the genealogy and history of where your last name comes from? Could be a nickname that you earned as a kid. And the person between the two of you that's in charge of who talks first is the person who's got the most jewelry on their hands. So all of a sudden, they're starting to notice more about each other as people. And for us, there's something playful even in saying, you get to be the boss of who talks first. And what's happened is the status in the room has started to shift. Because in this group, we may have a CEO and some executive vice presidents and some vice. It's often a group who, in their little fishbowl, those little fishies have related with each other in a certain way. They got ways of being with each other, partly that are in the DNA and the genetics of their fishbowl, partly the water, which none of them can see, these implicit rules of how we relate with each other, counting jewelry on their hands, and to find out that some man who shows up in this very uber serious kind of way is the one with the most jewelry. I mean, that's beautiful. 
or to find out the nickname that someone had as a kid and the story of how it ended up to be theirs. So when, we, when I think about play, and at Deeper Funner when we think about play, it's everything from the little guys on the charts to the chairs, to the before it's about us and our learning objectives in the session, it's about you people. Who are you with each other? What are the stories that make you who you are? You're bringing your whole selves and these past histories with you. Let's get that in the room with us. So one minute story, no matter how big of a big shot you are, you got one minute, just like the person with whom you're talking. Okay, say thank you to your conversation partner, new lineup by birth date, January 1st babies all the way through to December 31st. Share, it's a made up word, an ecoduction, blend of ecology and introduction. One minute story with as much detail and sensory granular specificity as you can. Paint a one minute picture of the land from which you come. And when you were tiny and your caregivers told you to go play outside, what was that for you? What were the sounds, the smells? What was the earth like under your feet? Who did you play with? What did you play? What did it mean for you growing up to go play outside? The person between the two of you who um, is going to um, kind of be in charge of who tells her story first is the person who had the longest commute to get here. So we're learning things about each other in this quick, playful, pretty structured way, and we're learning about each other, we're shifting what we would call the water, the relational goo, we're stealth norming, it's a phrase we like because underneath all this we're reminding through doing every voice matters here. Every background, story, experience matters here. We take turns here, and every voice gets the same amount of time. This is an all play. <laughs> Nobody's sitting watching. We're in this together. Um, yeah, so we might, I mean, that whole activity, we might do a final lineup by color of outfit. It's up the lightest hues here darkest hues um, and it's so much fun to watch people sort of like oh I'm mixed colors I don't know I <sighs> blue shirt with stripes black vest I don't know this and it's so much fun to watch people solve problems together because they want to get it right and and we'll often use that as a teaching moment because they'll ask for help where do I fit where in the lineup am I we'll often bring to people's attention that even in professional groups like this, just we say, just think about the IQ in this room. Even in groups like this, if we, as creators of this space, said, okay, pick a partner. There are some people that have a little mini anxiety attack. Who are the cool kids? Who does the CEO choose to be his or her partner? The moment we invite you to line up by color of outfit, you want to solve that challenge. There's a game and you want to get it right. And all of a sudden the idea of, well, you and I are standing beside, I don't really like you much, I don't even really know you, but our outfits are here. So here we are. We've again shifted what's possible between and among people by taking away that little, who are the cool? Um, and quite often, and I've shared this activity with you before, we will invite people um, as a connecting conversation to tell the story of your life in a minute that ends in the sentence. And that's why I'm here in this room today. I'm not sure that you would really call that a game. To us, there are lots of elements of play in that opening. 
And that's very different than here's where we're going today. Here's what we're going to accomplish. Here's how we want all of you to behave or inviting people to put up on a flip chart. How do we want to be with each other today as we dig into these compelling, provocative, juicy challenges that you're facing? And for us, the room is different. That's just one example of an opening that we think changes what's possible in the room. And we'll often invite people to say, what have you noticed in the last seven minutes? So, <clears throat> it's tempting to just want to talk about different ways we might play with a similar group and when we play and how. I just don't want to get abstract and theoretical. I, I think you're doing great. I think that captures really like one opening, one example. That doesn't mean you always open that way and that doesn't mean you don't change it around. Yeah. I think uh, what came up with two things, uh, you, you started to touch on game and play. So this idea of you're using the games, but it's about play. It's not about the game. And there's another question we had thought about earlier, but I was curious how you make that distinction between what's a game and what's a play. It's just an aside, my curiosity. But it is also a good lead into the idea of, so what is play? And maybe this is the place where you step into those, that note. Because like, it's all influencing how you are doing what you're doing. You're inviting something in that moment. Yeah. And where, what is that that you're trying to invite into? Like I, I hear a step out of your norms, step out of the statuses, step into something new. What's your thinking about what are you co-creating or inviting them into? So three different things, pick whichever way you want to go. When we talk about groups or teams that we think are collaboratively smart or collectively intelligent. There's lots of different language put on these new ways of working. Groups and teams that consistently unlock group genius. There are three principles or drivers that we notice and we actually think play is, is part of what makes it all possible. These folks are learning into their potential. There's a curiosity. We're all in the process of becoming. We, we don't have answers, and so we're bringing this experimental vibe to our very real work. There's something playful in that. We don't know what's going to come of this. Let's try it and notice what happens. Let's adjust as we go. I'm learning as an individual. You're learning as an individual. We're learning how to do this together and play this game that neither of us has played. We're changing and making up rules as we go, noticing what happens in the world as we, as we experiment. So this sort of growth mindset, we're learning, we are going to share and advertise our mistakes. Can I have a do-over, right? Something shifts when we bring, when you watch little kids play. Again, I want to try it again. And when we watch these folks that we talk about as being collaboratively smart, they've got that holding this lightly, experimenting, Yes, there's lots at stake. Let's advertise our mistakes. You can have do-overs here. We're all in the process of becoming something that isn't yet. And so there's this learning thing. Then there's these, this idea of co-creating solutions. None of us have the answer. We're making it up. We want to come up with crazy cool ideas that no single one of us could have thought of. And one of our favorite sayings, we don't know to whom to attribute this, is collaboration is not about gluing together existing egos. It's about the ideas that didn't exist until after everyone entered the room. And if we're going to co-create new possibilities, actions, ways, of providing service and making the world a better place. There are certain ways of being that we want to nourish and cultivate. We want people to play big. Share your idea only if it's half-baked and seems a little woo-woo. 
Invite others to play yes and with that idea. Share what you notice. Find your voice. Speak up. Let go of needing to be the smartest person in the room. Let go of needing to have the whole plan designed and laid out. Just, just know that by letting go of that and inviting others in, more becomes possible. Notice more. Be present. Pay attention to what you see and hear. Pay attention to some of your own assumptions and things that might be getting in your own way. Notice what you notice and realize that there are things that other people see that you can't and invite them to share what they notice. And then for us, the secret sauce, always make the other person look good. Those are the ways of being we want to nourish and cultivate if we're going to co-create solutions. And there's something in play when we invite people in. It's an all play. We're all playing in this game. Um, like so many games and activities, they're hard to play with people if their hands are in their pockets or they're on their iPhones. Show up, be present, notice more. Let go of needing to look sophisticated and smart and always right. And that for us, I mean, it's one of the reasons why that lineup game that I talked about where people are looking for their right color of outfits, it's so beautiful to watch someone who typically has quite a sophisticated, elegant kind of demeanor, to see them scrambling up and down with, does the tie count? No, I'll flip the tie. And all of a sudden when people are, are the status starts to shift, more is possible. 